each corner, there's a point at which you should turn the car into the bend, clip its apex, and a point at which you should exit. Gran Turismo's Kazunori talks of the racing line as an element that the car itself will define. Whenever I'm driving on a track, my attention is focused on being calm and smooth. I always aim for a smooth lap. The secret of driving fast is to let the car go the way it wants to, not to fight it. The racing line isn't necessarily the most geometrically efficient line. Rather, it's the line which the car traces when you let it lead you. Lines will be decided naturally if you follow the car's lead. A fast lap isn't about going flat out everywhere. There will be times when you need to go slowly in one section so that you can be quick in another. This is what Driving Test 4 teaches you in Prologue. Here on the real racetrack, it's exactly the same. Master the test in Gran Turismo and you'll master it in real life. The most important thing is to be on the throttle as soon as you exit the corner. The quicker you're back on the gas, the faster you'll be on the straight. Racing school instructors call this slow in, fast out. Try to attack the first section of these corners with too much speed and you'll run wide off the track. Then you're in trouble. You'll lose loads of speed and won't get the car into the right position to take the next turn. The end result being you've lost loads of time. The whole lap is ruined and all because you were too fast in the wrong place at the wrong time. you start driving on a track, even if you've been driving on the road for years, you don't really understand the forces that build up in a car when it's travelling at racing speeds. The energy which a car creates when travelling at speed can easily push you off the track, as the lads from Polyphony are finding out. So tests like this can be both fun and a steep learning curve. Once you've understood these forces, they can be made to work in your favour, and that's just what the slalom test is all about. The objective here is to drive through the course in the quickest time without hitting any cones. It looks simple and not very relevant to fast driving, but if you think that, you're very wrong. The trick is to let the car flow and establish a rhythm. As you can see, to do this, the driver lifts off the throttle as he rounds the cones. Then he's back on the throttle to the next row of cones. Lifting the throttle pitches the car's weight forward and helps the turn. From the outside, the car's movement should have all the grace of a champion slalom skier. Now look what happens when the driver attacks the course without thinking, just trying to get through as quickly as possible. The car gets out of shape and he's lost his rhythm. But worst of all, it's taken him 50% longer to complete the course. It doesn't matter how good your car is or your skill as a driver, you need to keep your concentration throughout these tests or you'll run ragged and spin out. Even Kazunori in the awesome Mitsubishi Evo 8 with permanent four-wheel drive finds a slalom can catch him out. I'm sorry.
this is really like a dream. I, I'm getting to drive the cars that I read about in magazines, the ones that I can't afford personally, but then here I am actually in the driver's seat and being able to to take it out and really extract the full performance out of these vehicles that you really can't do out in the public without being fined huge amounts of money and having your license taken away. One of the things that I learned how to do was in a car that's going 200 kilometers per hour, it was quite thrilling to be able to break from that down to zero to stop was uh, a real educational experience. This is a real-world replica of one of Prolog's driving tests. It doesn't sound logical, but in order to go fast, you have to master braking. This test teaches you how to brake hard, smoothly and with precision. The inexperienced track driver tends to brake too softly and too late. Just imagine that while your car is knocking down the cones, you're trying to turn into a corner. You need to plan your braking by taking reference points from the side of the track. These could be signs, bridges or grandstands. Many tracks have distance boards prior to each corner, which makes your planning even simpler. Without a plan, you're certain to get out of shape. Precision is required. The professional driver will brake hard early and then gently start to come off the brakes to avoid a skid. Once you've mastered the basic track skills of cornering and braking, it's time to confront the toughest challenge, the rally stage. This is a typical scene for a competition rally driver and one that humbles even the fastest and bravest of Formula One drivers. Weighing in at just over a thousand kilos, this is a Group N Mitsubishi Evo 7. Like most modern rally cars, it has permanent four-wheel drive with a combination of three differentials controlling torque split, which to you and me means independent power delivery to each wheel. Powered by a two-litre turbocharged engine, it develops up to 300 bhp, is geared to 140 miles an hour and should propel you to 60 around a Welsh valley such as this in just five seconds. When you're spectating on a rally stage as the latest Scandinavian hotshot hammers past in a four-wheel slide, the term smooth doesn't spring to mind. You'll just want to get in the car, nail the throttle and hear the engine popping and banging like rifle fire. But to be fast on the dirt, you've still got to work on that smoothness thing. It may look as though your rally hero is all arms and elbows, but he's still trying to make minimum movements. And to interpret the instructions from a navigator and understand the road ahead, a rally driver needs the computing power of NASA, combined with the coordination of a dancer. It's all about being prepared for what's ahead and setting the car up for it. The driver is working harder than the road racer with more steering input and gear changing, but his movements should be just as smooth and calculated. Driving a rally car fast is all about flow and momentum. The top rally driver has an incredible level of car control. He feels what the car's doing underneath him, looks ahead at the surface and predicts every bump and depression's likely effect on the car. It's a lesson in concentration. If you're struggling to control the car, you're not working with it. Things happen fast and you need to be ahead of the game for whatever's round the next corner or over the next crest. A mistake on a racetrack costs just fractions to your lap time. Even a big trip across the grass or a gravel trap might not be the end of your race. In rallying though, there's less margin for error. It's like you're on a tightrope, just a few yards off the line and you've hit tree stumps, boulders or worse, careered off a cliff and it's goodbye stage win 
Hello, Mountain Rescue. So, whether it's a forest stage in Wales or a virtual stage in Gran Turismo, it's the same deal. As ever, keep it smooth and don't fry your brain by driving too fast. I bought my race car because of GT and when I test drove the, the car in real life and I played it in Gran Turismo, it was identical. Wherever you're driving, either in the virtual or real world, it's technique that matters. You need to master the skills and learn by your mistakes and the best way of doing this is in Gran Turismo. Some might say that GT is a racing game. I'd have to disagree. I'd say that it is true to its name. It's a driving simulator. By the time you've passed all the tests in Prologue, everything you've done will make perfect sense. You'll be a better, more confident and smoother driver. You'll have mastered the skills of driving fast and understood what it takes to win races. Playing Gran Turismo makes you want a car. I've seen so many people like that. It's natural for us to be captivated by cars, not just when we play Gran Turismo, but when we create it too. Whatever your interest in cars and driving, Gran Turismo gives you more. More experience, more entertainment and more skill for the real world.